In this lesson, we'll be examining the second type of loop, a while loop. Just to review, for loops are more useful when you want to execute a set of commands a certain amount of times. While loops are more useful when you want to execute a set of commands as long as a certain test condition is true. Both loops can be used to complete the same task, but usually one loop is best suited for a particular problem. The general form of a while loop is the following. We say while a certain test condition is true, and this test condition can be anything you like. It can be x greater than 5, or as we see down here, a less than 2, whatever is useful for your problem at hand. If this test condition is true, these commands will be executed. When we get to the end, we go back up to the top of the loop and reevaluate this test condition. If it's still true, the commands will be executed again, then we go back up to the top. If it's now false, the loop will be terminated. So here's an example. A is equal to negative 1. So we come to the test condition. Negative 1 less than 2, this is true. We add 1 to A, making it 0. We display 0 to the screen, and then we go back up to the top. We say 0 less than 2, this is true. We add 1 to A, making it 1, display 1 to the screen, go back up to the top. 1 less than 2, this is true. We add 1 to A, making it 2, display 2 to the screen, then we go back up to the top. 2 less than 2, this is false, so we do not execute these commands here. Instead, we continue on in our code. In the second example, we say B is equal to 100. We come to our while loop and our test condition. 100 not equal to 96, this is true. So we subtract 2 from B, making it 98, and we display 98 to the screen. We come back up to the top, 98 not equal to 96, this is true. We subtract 2 from B, making it 96, display 96 to the screen, go back up to the top, 96 not equal to 96, this is false. So we skip those commands, and our code continues on. When dealing with while loops, you must be careful about creating infinite loops. So here's a couple of examples of infinite loops. We say a is equal to 100. 100 is greater than 90, that's true, so we add 1 to a. We come back up to the top. 101 is greater than 90, that's true, so we would add 1 to a. 102 is greater than 90, then 103, 104, 105. a will always be greater than 90. This loop will keep going on and on and on forever. Here's another example, where we say b is equal to 10. While b is greater than negative 200, so 10 is greater than negative 200, that's true. a is equal to negative b, so a is equal to negative 10. We go back up to the top, b is still 10, so this statement is still true. We never update the value of b. So that's one thing you always must be careful to do. You always should update whatever variables that you use within this test condition. If you do get stuck in an infinite loop, you can use control C or type control C to terminate your code. Now we'll see how while loops can be used to do the same tasks that for loops uh, can be used for. So going back to the previous example uh, from the previous lesson, we see that score is going to have the values 9, 10, 7, and 6. And if we display these values, we get 9, 10, 7, and 6. We can display the values of score using a while loop in the following manner. We'll comment out these two commands. So we have the values of score. We say that uh, we'll create a variable called n, which will be the number of elements of score, which is 4. We create some index variable called i, which we'll use to uh, help us go through every element of score, and then we'll have our while loop. So while i is less than or equal to n. So we're going to have i take on the values of 1, 2, 3, 4, and once i gets to 5, this loop will no longer be or this test condition will no longer be true and the loop will break. Every time we go through the loop, we're going to increase i by 1. 
So we'll avoid an infinite loop. And then we'll also display the value of i and the value of score of i. And we get the following uh, answer. Let's go through this. So score is 9, 10, 7, 6. n is 4, i is 1. So we say 1 less than or equal to 4. This is true. So we display the value of i, which is 1, and the score of 1, which is 9. So 1 and 9. We then say i is equal to i plus 1. So now i has the value of 2. We come back up to the top. And now we say 2 less than or equal to 4. That's true. So we display 2 and score of 2, which is 10. So 2 and 10. We come to uh, increase this command, which increases i by 1. So now i is 3. So 3 is less than or equal to 4. So we display 3 and score of 3, which is 7. So 3 and 7. We increase i by 1. So now i is 4. This statement is still true. 4 is less than or equal to 4. So we say we display 4 and then score of 4, which is 6. So 4 and 6. i is now equal to 5. We come back up to the top. 5 less than or equal to 4. False. Loop breaks and we display i on the screen. We can use the break command to end a while loop if i is equal to 3, for some reason we'll want the loop to break. When we run the code, we get the following. So we say n is equal to 4, i is equal to 1, 1 is less than or equal to 4, that's true, we'll display 1 and score of 1, which is 9, on the screen. We increase i by 1. i now is 2. So i equal to 3, this is false, we ignore this if statement. We go back up to the top. Uh, 2 less than or equal to 4, true. So we display 2 and score of 2, which is 10. i is now 3, so if i is equal to 3, break, this is true, we break the loop, and we display i, which is now 3. Now we'll calculate the mean value of score using a while loop. So let's get rid of this if statement. And we'll use a similar method that we used with the for loop. We'll say m, which will be our mean, equals 0. We'll say m is equal to m plus score of i. So every time we go through the loop, we'll be adding uh, the next element of score into this running total called m, and at the end, we'll say m is equal to m divided by n. So let's block out these displays, or comment out these displays, and execute the code. Okay, we see that eventually m has the value of 8 after the entire code is executed. This is the mean of 9, 10, 7, and 6. So let's go through this very briefly. We assign the values of score. n is equal to the number of elements in score, which is 4. i is 1. And we set the running total to be 0. 1 less than or equal to n. This is true. So we add 0 plus the first element of score, which is 9. To, and that gets assigned into m. So now m is 9. We increase i by 1. i is now 2. 2 less than or equal to 4. True. So we say 9, which is the current value of m, plus the next element of score, which is 10, makes 19. We add 1 to i. i is now 3. So we say uh, 3 less than or equal to n, true. So we enter the loop. 19 plus 7 makes 26. i is now 4. 4 less than or equal to 4, true. We add 26 to the fourth element of score, which is 6, makes 32. i is 5. 5 less than or equal to 4, false. So then we calculate m divided by n, which is 4. So 32 divided by 4 is 8. Notice how if I uh, 
forgot to update the value of i, so let's comment out this i equals i plus 1. i is equal to 1, 1 less than or equal to n, and then in this entire loop, i is never updated, so this statement will always be true, creating an infinite loop. So let's see what happens. We see that there's just a blinking cursor because this loop is getting executed over and over and over and over until I decide to either turn off my computer or kill the code. So I'm going to type in control C and that will terminate my code.